If you're reading this book, you probably have a good reason. Perhaps someone who cares about you has shared concerns about ways you have behaved. You may have questions or concerns yourself. It might also be a requirement or a recommendation of a program that you're in. Perhaps someone who cares about you is concerned about you and encouraged you to read this. Regardless of why you're picking this book up, we encourage you to at least read this introduction before putting it back down. Stay open to the possibility that what is written here is of relevance to you and can help you in how you live your life. No one behaves perfectly in their relationships with others. Everyone occasionally says or does the wrong thing. The best anyone can hope for is to learn from those moments of behaving badly and do their best to not repeat them. Sometimes, though, they repeat similar hurtful behaviors over and over again. These are not simply moments of being imperfect. They reflect ways of living and thinking in the world. They form patterns that cause greater problems in relationships, especially close relationships with partners and children. Those behaviors that are hurtful to others and happen over and over again can be described as abusive and or controlling. When most people hear the word abuse, they think of awful physical violence. However, abuse covers a wide range of behaviors, most of which are not physical and do not seem as extreme. Some people who struggle with being abusive have never been physically abusive in any way. Just because you have rarely or never been physically violent does not mean that being abusive is not a problem for you. Abusive behavior can include words, facial expressions, the way decisions are made, how you express unhappiness, and how you deal with people you love, acting in ways you do not like or agree with. There are a number of other words people use, so the abusive and controlling behavior doesn't sound so bad. Type A, perfectionist, problems with conflict, and communication issues are a few. But easily, the most common euphemism people use instead of talking about someone having problems with abuse and control is to say they have anger issues. They say someone needs anger management and has anger problems or that they lose their temper or have temper issues. Having issues with anger does not sound nearly as bad as having issues with being abusive. Besides, everyone gets angry at times, and occasionally, losing your temper is common, even normal. There are tons of books about anger issues written by all kinds of people. Therapists, clergy, executives, even Buddhist monks. Likewise, there are many professionals who help people with their anger. But the therapists in books that deal with anger rarely, if ever, even mention the words abuse or being controlling with others. They focus solely on managing the emotion of anger. They talk about losing control of anger and learning how to take control or manage their anger. It's almost like there's a wild beast inside some people that needs to be tamed and managed and contained. The problem with focusing on anger is that it completely ignores the real problem. It's true that some people need to process the emotion of anger and that some people have unresolved anger about certain issues. But that's different from someone we have identified as having an anger management issue or having problems with anger. Take a moment to make a mental list of the people you think might have an anger management issue, a temper, or problems with their anger. What leads you to think that about them? Usually it's because they have lost their temper with others. How have they lost their temper? Usually by yelling or cussing or hitting or throwing things. They've gotten into physical fights and said hurtful things or acted in ways that scared and alarmed others, right? All of those indicators are types of abuse. 19 times out of 20, if not more, the reason people think someone has an anger issue is because they have repeatedly acted in abusive ways. The point here is that the problem is not their anger or temper. It's that they've been abusive. But even so, most of the books and professionals who deal with anger issues focus far more on the emotion of anger than on the abusive behavior that is the actual concern. They erroneously think the bad behavior is caused by anger, when, more typically, anger is actually a symptom of the person's underlying pro-abusive beliefs. We'll talk about this in more detail in Chapter 5, Abusive Thoughts and Beliefs. Even if you don't think you have issues with being abusive, do you think you have issues with being controlling? How about with anger? How about with being a perfectionist? How about with being type A or being intimidating? If you can answer yes to any of those, you should probably continue to read this book and see how much of it applies. Another reason you may think abuse is not an issue for you is the images and stereotypes of what abusive people look like. 